Okay, so in this episode, we're going to talk about how to include a hover effect once I take my cursor and put it on top of some kind of object inside my website. So right now, if I were to hover my cursor on top of a piece of text or a dip box or an image, right now, nothing is going to happen. So let's say I want to take my new section down here. And once I hover on one of the black boxes, I want it to turn into red. Now, it's actually very simple to do that. And all you need to do to include a hover effect is to go into your style sheet and add a piece of styling to it. So let's go ahead and find our news dash image styling and just simply copy the styling we have here and paste it below it. Now, all you need to do to add a hover effect is to go after the uh, class news dash image and say colon hover. And now it's actually gonna go ahead and do all the styling we have in here once we hover on top of the object. So of course we don't need to have all the stuff repeated. We only need to type in what we want to change. So right now I'm just going to go ahead and delete my width, my height, and the commented background image we have down here. So right now I have a background color, which I can change into red. I can save it. And once we refresh our browser, you'll notice that once I hover on these black boxes, they turn into red. Now this is all nice, but right now it just kind of changes very suddenly. Maybe I want to include some kind of smooth transition into red. And in order to do that, we're going to have to add some CSS3 transitions, which we're going to talk about in the next episode. Now, we're not done with hover effects yet, though, because right now, let's say I want to hover on something, but I want another object to change once I hover on one specific object. Now, in order to do this, you can only do it if that object is inside the object you want to hover on. So if I want to change, for example, my... Um, let's say I want to change the text once I hover on the whole new section, then I'm actually going to have to tell it, well, I have to make sure that the text is inside this specific post. So going into my style sheet again, then where we have our news dash image colon hover, I'm going to go ahead and say, well, basically what we're saying here is we're saying, okay, we have a class called news dash image. And once we hover on it, we want it to do this. But right now we want something else to happen to some other object. So I'm going to say after the hover space, and then I'm going to tell it what I want, uh, what kind of object I want to change. So right now let's actually go ahead and delete or maybe copy this effect we just added here and instead go up to our index dash news, sorry, index dash news article, go ahead and paste it below here instead and then change the path to index dash news article right before the hover effect takes place. So now, once you hover on the article, something else is gonna change. So right now, after the hover, we're gonna go ahead and add a class called uh, index dash news space p. So right now, what we're saying is that once we hover on top of our index dash news, which has, uh, oh, sorry, the article, which is inside index dash news, we wanted to include a hover effect on this item or like this object. So this object right now is the paragraph inside index dash news. Okay. So right now our text for our paragraph is actually black. So let's go ahead and change it to red. So I'm going to go ahead and say color colon red and save it. So now if I go refresh my browser, you'll notice that my paragraph doesn't change. Okay, so I did actually find out why it didn't change because right now, like I said, once we hover on an object and we want something else to change, we can only do it to something that's inside the object we're trying to hover on. So automatically, it's going to assume that the paragraph is inside index dash news. So right now, it's actually looking for a index dash news inside index dash news, which has a uh, paragraph in it. So we need to remove the index dash news save it and now if you go refresh the browser you'll notice that now it changes so what we can do here with this kind of stuff is well it's it's kind of nice to have something specific change like let's say you want the text to change but you don't want it to only change when you hover on, on top of the text you want it to change once you hover on top of the entire post a lot of times you're going to run into the issue where you know how do we do this and this is how you do it so i talked about adding hover effects and like i said a lot of times it's much better to add transition to it, which we'll do in the next episode. But sometimes you might want to change something else than just the color. So let's go back into our code. And instead of changing the color to red, or actually, yeah, we're just gonna go ahead and remove that. 
we're going to change the font size once we hover on it to 20 pixels. So going back in and refreshing my browser, you'll notice if I don't click on the wrong thing, you'll notice that we do actually get some change in the text size. Now, what we can do now is we can actually go ahead and do quite a lot of stuff. We can also change our um, the boxes to change uh, size. We can make it wider. We can make it larger. We can do all kinds of stuff. Any kind of styling you can think of, you can do to optics once you hover on it, like we're doing right here. So you can do a lot of stuff with hover, hover effects. And like I said in the next episode, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to do some transitioning, which means that we're going to smoothly transition into something. So right now, if I were to hover on an object, we have transition on, it's not going to suddenly turn into a bigger font. It'll actually slowly enlarge in itself till it hits the pixels that we told it to when we hover on it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you guys next time.